A junk journal project doesn't have to take a long time, and the amount of time you put into it doesn't equal the value or quality of your book and your creative process. If you're new here, my name is Bree from 1134 Press, where we share bookmaking, journaling, and papercraft inspiration to help creative journalers document their life. And today, I'm going to share with you some tips on how to start and finish a junk journal quickly by showing you how I made this mini junk journal to archive my recent birthday celebration. Tip one, choosing the right size and binding style. It's a no brainer that if you make a book with 50 pages, it's gonna take you longer to fill your pages and tell your story. If you've watched my Traveler's Notebook mini series, then you know I've become a fan of working with thinner books. Making passport sized journals are quick and easy to make. And once you're finished with them, there's an endless possibility of how to incorporate them into a larger junk journal later down the line. Also, choosing a simple binding style like the pamphlet stitch or using staples are a great time saver. Tip two, planning. A project takes me forever when I don't have a plan. That doesn't mean that I sit down and sketch out every single page, but I do start with a singular idea that keeps me on track. For instance, I was inspired by all the birthday cards that I received in the mail and wanted to create a journal that represented envelopes. Knowing that vintage postage is my main inspiration, then I can plan how to make the vision come to life. Tip three, limit your materials. 
No matter if you're new to junk journaling or have been doing it for years, we are susceptible to shiny new object syndrome. We buy and buy and buy new materials, make new embellishments with the old materials, save scraps and collect vintage paper goodies. And then when it's time to sit down and create something new, we spend more time sifting through our beautiful collections than actually getting to the task of making our journals and recording our stories. So my next tip is to limit the materials on your desk desk. Limitation breeds creativity. And this tip will help you make quicker decisions about how to decorate your page. I hope you found these tips helpful. Let me know in the comments what part of making and decorating a junk journal takes up a lot of your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more bookmaking, journaling, and papercraft inspiration. Thanks for watching.